Hello and welcome to Architeasy. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create uh, these shelves in Revit. Of course, on a very simple and a quick way. And uh, I think that a lot of you are assuming that this should be done as a model in place, for example. And yes, for this one it could be quite simple. But if you would like to adjust it, to extend it in a sense of the length or the height, then you will have to do everything from scratch. So to make all new model in place from beginning. Therefore, I'm going to show you a completely new way how you can make it and how you can make it very adjustable. And it's actually very, very simple to do it. And even this method I'm going to show you is simpler than the model in place, at least from my point of view. Uh, for this tutorial I will be using Revit 2023 and the ordinary metric architectural template which comes with it. So let's just move to Revit. So the first thing I'm going to do in Revit is to determine the space and I will just create the walls and the floors. Okay, the space is done, let me just create one camera view and I will then adjust the settings for the camera so we can control how it looks like in our modeling process. Mm -hmm, this is fine. Uh, let's just add some graphical improvements. This is, this is okay. Okay, so we set up this view. We are going to look the things from here. And uh, let me just create one section so we can be precise with the heights. What I would like to do is, let's say that I would like to make that this one box is 500 by 500, which means that this is two meters and the height is two and a half meters. And then this should be two and a half. Yes, super. Okay. And the way I'm going to make this is a curtain wall. So you will see how I'm going to make it from the completely empty curtain wall, which contains nothing. So I'm going to add a mullion. You will see how you can create the new mullion type as well, how you can create a new panel type and how you can put the panel type at the back of the curtain wall, actually, how you can create the casework within the curtain walls. So I'm going to the wall and I will take the empty curtain wall and we'll just make a new type. We'll go to duplicate. We'll pick for now the empty curtain panel. And then let's adjust the vertical and the horizontal grid with a distance of 500. And we'll just give this rectangular mullion for the interior types. And we'll make this 2 meters in length. If I go to 3D, let me just move this a little bit. You see how it looks like. So what I would like to do now is to select one of the mullions then I'm going to unpin it and we'll go here to the edit type and we'll duplicate this one. So this one is going to be 350 millimeters by 40 millimeters, let's say. I will replace the material, we'll add, add this could be wood stained. And we'll just click apply. Then I'm going to pin it back. We'll select our curtain wall and we'll replace all the mullions with the, with the mullion I just created. What we need to do is also to make the height of this wall to be two and a half meters. Okay. And now let me just assign the panel. So for a panel, I will pick this solid one. 
I will select the one from the from the plan view and will duplicate it. So let's just make the thickness of 20 millimeters. Let's add the same material as we did for the mullion. So it's wood stained. And the offset is going to be 185. Why 185? Uh, the depth of the mullion is 350, so half is 175 plus half uh, of the thickness of the panel, it's 10, so it's 185. You see? Then I'm going to pin it back. I will again select the whole curtain wall and will replace the panel with the one I just made. And then we'll define the joint condition. In this case, it's going to be border and the vertical grids continues. And let's go to 3D to see what we have. Okay, so this seems fine. Okay, so now we need to move it to the correct position. I will use a bit of the cat technique. We'll use a detail line. We'll offset it for 1.8 meters. And we'll select our wall. We'll take a move and we'll move it from here to here. And if I just move this to realistic, you see, if you go to the picture, you see that we have no mullions here and also probably not down there. So to get rid of those mullions here is just you need to select them. You can anytime do that with the hovering mouse or one of them and then just pressing tab. In the bottom left corner, you will see that you selected the mullion. Unpin it and delete it and repeat the process for the rest. And also what you would like to do is to get rid of those four lines between the panels. So you can do it with going here to the line work tool. And then just for the line style, pick invisible lines. Okay, here it comes. So that was it basically for this one. And anytime, for example, if you would like to make it to go more to the right, for example, like this, you can adjust it. I mean, you see that now we got this smaller piece and if you would like to have the same number of them, you can anytime go to the edit type and instead of the fixed distance, for example, you could have the maximum spacing and I will make it on 600. So you see that we got the same number of them. And let me just model the bed. So modeling the bed, I will be doing on the opposite way. And on this way, uh, on which I'm going to model the bed, you can as well model this, uh, these shelves. So it's going to be with using a model in place tool. I will create a reference plane, which is, let's say, 1.8 meters from the wall. Name it, I will name it as O1. And from the section view, we'll go just to component, model in place, pick the furniture, and let's just take extrusion, reference plane of one, 100 from the bottom, and 100 from here, just to make a space for the madras. This should go 1.8 meters. So you see, it's here, uh, let's just add the material. There are two ways how you can add materials. The first one is just to add it directly here in a family, it's a model in place, you can do it. Or if you would like to test it uh, without going any time uh, into the family, you can set up the parameter and I'm going to do that. So this one is going to be wood and I will just create the madras on the same way as I did this with extrusion while I will give the madras for this one click done okay yeah maybe this doesn't need to be 1.8 meters this obviously needs to be shorter so I will just go to the level one and we'll move this for let's say 600 so you see it moved the whole bed what you have to do is just select it and drag it drag this to here and yes let's just add materials so why add the parameters if i didn't uh, make the parameters for materials i will need to go to the edit place and then to add materials 
right now because we have them i can just go to edit type and i will add i will add this wood for the wood the same one as we have on the shelves and we'll add ah, it could be this one default with the appearance or something like this and yeah here it comes basically that was it for today curtain wall tool is definitely one of my favorite tools in Revit that's for sure <laughs> I'm using it quite often in all of my projects and with this tutorial I wanted to show you that you don't need to use them just as the facade elements you can really use them as you see like I made the shelves as a case for a tool so the way that the variety of using curtain wall tool in Revit really depends on your imagination and your knowledge of how you can use them so just try them, explore your ideas and if you have any questions or you have any thoughts about this and just let me know in the comments what you think about this. It would be great to hear from you what's your opinion about the curtain walls. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really hope that uh, this is going to be useful for you. If so, like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much again.